Welcome to the Acoustic Shop channel. Welcome to us. Jeremy, welcome to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I feel welcomed. <laughs> you know what we're going to do today? We're going to discuss, everybody's asking, what are the favorite boutique brands of guitars out there? And then, of course, that means what are our favorite uh, in here? And we're just going to discuss it a little bit. We're going to riff a little bit. It's a, a, a tough one. Builders. So we're going to talk about the top 10 favorite boutique level guitars that we know of. Number 10, Collings Guitars. Yes, we've known about Collings for years and years and years. Bill Collings uh, reinvented the boutique world for high-end guitars by creating a more intricate, detailed build that had its own sound. I think unique. he's kind of like the Sam Adams. I, I listened to a podcast on Sam Adams beer, and they really started that boutique uh, microbrewery movement in America. And I, I think Collins did the same thing for guitar builders, where all of a sudden all these guitar builders popped out and I think he was very one of the ones that inspired a lot of people to just say, let's do this. I think we can build a really good boutique guitar. Yeah. So out of uh, Austin, Texas, is that correct? Yep, that is correct. Bill Collings came out with something that was, uh, the, the beauty of what Collings did was they made a guitar that was as beautiful on the outside, on the inside, sorry, as it was on the outside. And Attention that's just detail. so much detail, accuracy, just really cool building techniques, made for a great sounding guitar and a great looking guitar. Collings is my number 10. Number nine, McPherson Guitars. Yes, these are definitely should be in the top 10. And they're different. They're not really the standard bluegrass style Com guitar we're used completely to. Completely different. Completely different uh, intent behind them. They actually went with an engineer that re-engineered a guitar to have the most sustain, the most broad uh, sounding board to really get the most tone out of it. It, it. Listening to them describe all the innovations they put into it, it felt like you were in a uh, an engineer's workshop, workshop. Yeah. figuring out all these details on how we're going to make this thing work mechanically better. I think that's uh, the best way to describe McPherson is the Steinway of uh, guitar yeah. building. Every single thing in there is perfectly done from their uh, wood bindings that are perfectly mitered corners with no edges and, and just lines up right their with overpass, their underpass, uh, x where they don't touch each carbon other. Carbon reinforced necks and just everything that you could possibly engineer and do as perfectly as possible, that's where Matt McPherson designed And then on top of that, just the execution. Everything is perfection where even on the inside of the guitar, they don't want any rough edges on it. They, they sand the inside of their, their binding, the inside of their uh, X braces. All of it is just supposed to be pristine little, and perfect. Little known fact, in every uh, bridge plate of a McPherson guitar is a pearl in, uh, inlaid logo backwards so that when you put a mirror in it, you will see it Matt correctly. Matt McPherson's signature inside there. That's right. Very cool. So uh, I definitely think that should be in the top 10. Uh, just out of build quality and everything. And then also for the it, the type of person those are for, there's no better guitar. That praise and worship, the, the really strummy, big huge sustain. Sound, some of the big country artists that use those, they just fill up a stage with sustain. So a great guitar and a great boutique builder that a lot of other ones are. They, they raise the bar over quality and what's expected out of a, a boutique builder. guitars. This is one that's uh, a little less known than uh, most of these other boutique ones and has really kind of knocked us on our seat uh, the last couple years. They come from uh, across the pond. That's right, England. Alistair Atkin, who is doing a vintage sound and kind of a vintage look, trying to get it with some modern appointments too. Um, I'm not gonna say that these are as super clean built like uh, like the, the stuff we talked about so far, McPherson and Collings and some of the other ones that'll be on this list, but I will say they really deserve to be in there because they are coming out with a powerful monstrosity of a guitar. When you strum it, it's like it explodes out of your hands. And just, you know, if you just want that killer cannon that you can just get, Akin, I think, is doing it. It's one of those guitars that our, our, our guitar playing staff can't wait to open the case. Every from. single time. Every time we get a shipment of those, there's a line of uh, our employees wanting to play it out and be the first one to try it out. 
And same with customers. As soon as they know one's in the store, they seem to go out just about as fast because every one of them has been consistently a monster of a sounding guitar. Plus, they're affordable. And I think that's another key point to that brand is they're still new, they're still hungry, so they're still affordable when it comes to the boutique-level guitars, and they should be definitely on this list. All right, hitting the number seven spot. This is a guitar builder that uh, may not be considered boutique by everyone's standards, so we're gonna we're gonna segment it a little bit. Not the okay. entire brand, but one segment of Martin. Yeah, which is the Martin Custom Shop slash the authentic uh, section of that. Uh, man, I have been blown away with the Martin Authentic series uh, over the last while. Coming up with a section of the custom shop to build a particular guitar that is very vintage-like really recognizing the details that have to come out. I mean, Martin's always built great guitars. I'm still a huge Martin fan. I love their stuff, but to be able to go, all right, what is it that everybody loved about our legacy? And then come back into there and go, you know what? We're gonna do that every bit as good with modern, uh, with this more modern uh, need. Uh, well, I, I would even say it's even further than that. The people of today, have higher expectations. That's what I mean, a modern expectation. People want to see the quality level at this super high end, but they still want the sound and feel of a vintage instrument. And that's where I think the custom shop has really stepped up their game over the last five, 10 years. And it should obviously come as no surprise that Martin has some of the best luthiers in the world building guitars. They, they just have an incredible machine there to put out as many guitars as they do consistently well. And then to get, I'm sure, their finest builders to kind of focus on this custom shop division. Uh, I know we went to the NAM booth and did a big tour there, and those authentics just blew you away. Uh, mm -hmm. They blew me away on the other side of the microphone as well. <laughs> so uh, very impressed with the, the, what they're doing there. And uh, there's no reason they shouldn't be on this list. Absolutely. Number six, Boucher Guitars. Um, another kind of newcomer to the uh, world of uh, boutique level guitars. I really am impressed with what they're doing, which is bringing a vintage type sound with modern feel and a little bit of a modern tone. It's kind of like bridging the gap. The high expectations of a super high end guitar are all there. Uh, but now we're doing it with some of these modern twists to it. And, uh, you know, uh, you know this channel is going to be very vintage. Uh, you know, like, even though we love new guitars, we're still seeking that vintage tone that, uh, uh, you know, so the, Boucher is kind of interesting because it kind of gives you that with a twist. You know, like I said, the feel of the necks, the shape of the necks, um, the tone, having a little bit more brightness kind of falls into that, you know, a little bit more of that Collings type of tone with a uh, vintage Martin kind of feel. And they definitely have that smaller builder, that that boutique feel to it where they have packages that people can customize the guitar to fit their needs by just adding the, the gold pack or the vintage pack that, that bring that guitar up to the level you're looking for out of a boutique build and still keeping it somewhat standardized so that they can manage it. I think they do a great job with that. And uh, I know you have a lot of fun customizing these, just small tweaks to them here and there. It's one of the fun parts about working with a boutique builder is they have the ability to just say, all right, we'll build this one one-off guitar with these specifications. Absolutely. Coming up in number five, this is one that you've played for, gosh, 20, 25 years. Um, a company out of California, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz Guitars. Richard Hoover, I think, uh, I, again, also falls Another into that world Sam of Adams. Bill Collings. And, uh, you know, it... it that this is a guy who West Coast redefined what a new modern day guitar should be, um, and still holding true to the vintage world. We had a great conversation with Greg Deering, and I think Dana brought up the same thing. Where during the '70s and '80s, there was a void in the market where the big builders, the quality and the consistency of their instruments just kind of tanked super strong, for yeah. a while. At, coming out of the '70s into that, and then that left this big opening for these companies to come and say, "All right, we can do this better. We can do a small shop." build quality guitars, and I think Santa Cruz is one of those that really... Richard Hoover was right in the middle of it. He was building a vintage guitar, and he had a, you know, with some uh, 
cool takes on it, another direction. It's like he was loving the idea of violin building and uh, the techniques that they were using and then thinking of that and voicing and, and doing it in guitars and tone woods. And, and, and for me, I've played, a, like you said, a Santa Cruz guitar for a long time. To me, they were like the cool way to get a vintage uh, sound out of a brand new guitar, and I really, really enjoyed that. But yet, they also had a few innovations. I love the recessed pins, the bridge, belly bridge that kind of beveled off, that made it more comfortable uh, for my right hand. Uh, thinner and then, neck profile. On yeah, it. thinner neck profiles and and voicing tops and and doing tone and then, woods. Yeah, and the tone woods with it. Yeah. He, he just went extreme on some of those. You know, some of these hundred thousand year old pieces of wood, and and just finding these wood combinations that. Again, showcased what a boutique builder can do versus a mass production. I think what was cool about Richard Hoover was he was taking what you just said and doing it with an artist in mind. He would actually have players that he was working with and go, this is what these guys want to hear. This is how I think I can get them there. So, again, another innovative pioneer in the guitar world, Richard Hoover and Santa Cruz Guitars. <laughs> Number four for me, this one's kind of a little surprise, I know to some people because they have not had a chance to experience this yet, which is Bedell Guitars. Um, Bedell is doing some things right now that are knocking me out. I'm really, really excited about what is coming around the bend, and that's why they have made uh, this list right now. They are doing some cool stuff with tone matching using science along with uh, the traditional builds. They're still using a dovetail joint. They're still doing a lot of the traditional things that uh, these old vintage guitars did. But now with this tone uh, selecting ability, man, that is just, that's taking it to a whole nother level. And I'm really curious to see what's going to come out of them in the next few months. So far, they've been able to make small guitars sound big. They've been able to control big guitars to not sound overly mm -hmm. over the top. Uh, and just, you know, and the tone wood selection. Nobody right now and i'm serious it's i've been to them I, I we've seen a lot of the collections of, of tone woods from a lot of these builders and i'm not saying they don't have great stuff but man the collection of cool stuff that is sitting in bend oregon right now is uh, amazing and i'm really really excited about what's happening and just like with all these shops that are in this list the passion is there with the the from the owner all the way through the the, the person doing the sand the fine sanding they all just want to build the best instrument they can and you definitely see that when we went up to the to their their factory. Um, they're just doing a great job building consistent guitars, using science to actually be able to write down what are these combinations uh, tonally with the top versus the back. So they're able to dial in on what they're looking for and get the tone uh, consistent between guitars. Number three, this one is probably not a big surprise for those who have especially been following us over the past few months. I uh, recently got one of these guitars and I'm absolutely in love with it. Uh, Bourgeois Guitars, Dana again, another pioneer in the boutique building of modern day with a whole different slant on doing it. He has come up with a voicing system that is, again, unique and uh, very interesting. His kind of claim to fame is being able to get the most out of every single piece of wood. And I don't think he's necessarily voicing for a certain sound, but more just, what can I make this guitar be the best of? Yeah. And I, I find that to be really unique. It, it does kind of create uh, a unique sound. Um, you know, in when you're searching for that guitar, because it's not like you can just go, this is the sound Maybe I'm looking for, this is going to be the one. Um, it is definitely going to be like, this will tell me the, the spectrum it'll be in here, and then there's going to be some really cool, unique intricacies that he's going to voice out of that guitar. Yeah, consistently getting the most out of every guitar that he can, so that they, they have been uh, very impressive. Uh, watching how they did it is more of that old school, doing it by ear, tapping it and hearing it, and it took, it has to take years to really refine your ear to know what you're looking for. And that's very impressive that it is so um, new technology, new ways to build using old school ways of finding the tone that they're looking for. Yeah. And then again, quality, talk about consistency. They look for every little detail on their guitars. They do not let something out the door that it hasn't gone, been gone through with a fine tooth comb. Absolutely. And uh, that's, you know, when they get a guitar out on the market, 
they know that a bourgeois is going to be a fantastic guitar. And also, again, uh, another good thing for them, uh, being unique enough to kind of go, not only are we voicing it for as much as it can be, but also trying to figure out ways to make these uh, easier to maintain, easier to kind of control, and that's where that neck joint system comes in. Uh, better ways to kind of keep that flowing. Again, a very cool thing to do, and Dana definitely deserves to be on this list. And th these guys that are in these small boutique uh, builds, the passion they have just for going out and finding wood that they can bring back to their workshops, and that's something that Dana and his team, they go around the world, find a piece of wood, and, and you know they can tell by looking at it, this is going to get us this many excellent guitars of this quality, and they just there's a passion. When they go into a wood room, it's just like going into a fine wine cellar. They're just <laughs> exactly. so excited about picking up wood and smelling it and tapping it and listening to it. It's, it's a passion that you get out of these boutique builders. All right, now this one, number two, is going to be uh, kind of unique for a lot of you. But a lot of listeners are going to be unfamiliar with this guy. Yeah, uh, Caleb Smith or Smith Guitars. Caleb uh, has been <laughs> just kind of knocking it out of the park. This is a guy who has an absolute love for pre-war style guitars. And uh, also a great musician, a Incredible great fellow. Yeah. Anybody that's familiar with Balsam Range, he is the guitar player with them. Um, super fella, so nice. Um, Incredible flat picker. I mean, he's just phenomenal. But also, when he's not on the road touring, which they play a lot, he's back home building guitars, and you've played a lot of them, and I have. he's incredible. I, I, I really think uh, a guy who's just got every detail wanting to build a pre war guitar. I mean, this is it. He's got the stamp on the back of the peg head to look like the old ones. Uh, he just tries to do everything to feel and just act just like the actual real vintage guitar that you would be wanting to get. And they all come out as just big monster cannons. Uh, a lot of fun to play. Uh, you know, just, again, a guy who's doing a single shop and just kind of... So not, not a lot of them being released every year. No, Maybe very four or five few. guitars a year. Um, but so not in the same uh, league as far as the amount of guitars that he's putting out onto the market as the ones we've lifted so far. But just as your favorite builder, is this is one that you said had to be on the top of your list. Absolutely, I just I think he does such a great job at creating a cool look and a great sound all in one, and I just I find them to be very very cool. All right, so that brings us to our last on the list, and this one's probably not much of a surprise if you followed our channel. Uh, or if you're just you following know. some of the young hot pickers out in acoustic music today, you are going to be familiar with this brand and probably understand why it's number one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Preston Thompson Guitars. Uh, these are some of my favorite guitars out there right now. Being built in uh, Sisters, Oregon. Yep, in Sisters. Uh, this one to me is, if I was buying a brand new vintage guitar, Couple little tweaks to it that make it a little bit more playable, but just this is like I want a brand new version of a pre war guitar. Again, with all those details that we expect, the quote high expectations that uh, the American consumer uh, right now wants to see in a boutique level guitar. And expects, and then you know, there, there's the demand for them is so high that the, they have a waiting list right now where we have to put in orders. A year in advance just to get on the build list. 18 months right 18 now. 18 months in advance. Yeah. And most of those are already pre-sold through the shop. But there's a reason. They, they, they want to keep the shop manageable, even though the demand is going up there, because they don't want quality uh, going down at all. And that they're, they're doing a great job of keeping the, the staff they have so well trained, so consistently building these great guitars. Again, another instrument that when it arrives in the shop, we get all of our guitar playing staff lining up to be the first to play it. I've, I've actually had to create a uh, system with those guys uh, and gals, Christine out there at, uh, at Thompson Guitars, where we've actually had to force guitars into our lineup that actually will make it to the store uh, for sale. Because uh, we are actually building a lot of these. Most of these have been uh, built as custom guitars that are sold way before they're even started to be built and they're gone, you know, so they're just, we're just lining them up that way. So Christine and me have kind of come up with a system to kind of build a very few, every once in a while, one that will specifically make it to the serial room so that we can show and people. we have enough time to photograph it, take a video <laughs> of it, and then get it gone. The next day. That's exactly but, right. Uh, excellent guitar builder. They deserve to be the top list. Some of the top players in music, uh, Billy Strings, Molly Tuttle, uh, 
Peter Owen. I mean, all these great stars, young players are just gravitating towards Preston Thompson because they are just building this cannon of a guitar in a brand new uh, instrument that I think is just beautiful inside and out and tonally just hard to beat. Yep. I think those are so that kind of rounds out our top ten. I'm curious to see what you guys maybe who you got us. Who did we get wrong? <laughs> yeah, who did we get wrong? I'm curious to see if you guys got ideas of people that we uh, are not aware of. Uh, that That's we the cool would thing, like, like, like Caleb Smith, a very small builder that most people don't know about. I'm sure there are others out there that we haven't come across yet. They're just doing some excellent jobs. So we'd like to hear what you guys think. Is there anyone out there that you know of that we should check out? And uh, what did you think of this list? Are you familiar with these brands? And uh, you know, what, who do we get wrong? Who do we got to get on the next list? Oh, we're this you know, everybody's going to tell us what we got wrong. It's going to be so much of that. But anyway, we got our opinions. We love doing this kind of stuff. Again, it's all about acoustic music and acoustic instruments. And I'll tell you one of the videos, I think if you like this one, that you should check out. We did one a while back uh, called the Tony Rice Shootout. It had a lot um, of these boutique builders that are on this list. Mm -hmm. They built their version of the uh, Clarence White Tony Rice guitar. Yep. And we got to, that was one of the first blind tests that we ever did. And I love that video. So if you want, check it out. The link's going to be right here. And uh, again, we'll see you guys next time. See what you guys are, are up to. And uh, maybe we'll just pick a tune. I don't know. Do something. <laughs>